On this video we're going to show you how to do a little something on a wall to spruce it up. I was approached by a client who asked me if I could reproduce this photo that he found on the internet and I said sure let's go for it. So we started off with this wall which was a nice tan color and then I mixed up a lighter than that color and a darker than that color and uh, got my whiz roller out and a tray put those colors side by side in the tray nothing fancy and dip my roller into it and work it back and forth. You can see the one side of the roller is dark and the other side is light and it's just working it back and forth. Now we don't use any glaze at this point. This, these are solid colors because in working such an area this big you'd end up with lap lines and we don't want to end up with lap lines too hard to deal with. So this, this way we can go back over it if we have an area that we don't like. It's not a problem at all. And you just keep on working it and uh, it's actually pretty easy. I don't have the patience for rags and sponges and all that sort of thing. So here's a close-up of our roller. The Wiz roller, some places call it a long john. Might be called something else where you get your paint. Now, I wasn't entirely happy with the, um, with the color of the background there, so I'll show you what I'm going to do in a second. Here's the roller tray. On the left-hand side, we have the darker color. On the right-hand side, we have the uh, lighter color. And then I just rolled the roller into it, keeping them sort of separate. So you get some on each side of the roller. Now, you, like I was saying, our finish turned out a little bit red, too red for my liking. So I took some glaze, the Stays Clear from Benjamin Moore, and I put a little bit of tint in it and a little bit of white paint. And it's not very powerful, but just enough yellow in there that it would kick it over and warm up the surface. Even I can make mistakes. So this is what I did to fix it. So I took the glaze, added some of the PTC raw umber and burnt umber, and uh, then we added just a little bit of white just to give it a little body and mixed it up and in the next scene you'll see that I have that applied. You can see how that warmed up the wall, changed it dramatically so it's got that sort of ties in with the wall that you see on the right. Next thing I had to do was uh, mark out the pattern. In this case we're going to do the diamond pattern like you saw and we're going to fit four, four of them across the wall and it takes a little time to do this and of course if you have someone that can hold the end of the tape measure as you're going to see here in a second it makes it a lot easier. So see if you can get a buddy or something to hold the other side and help you out. Uh, taking your time to get the measurements right will uh, ensure that uh, you get your pattern on there the way you like it and everything will go smooth. But remember, if you make a mistake, no big deal. Start off with the first process, go back into it. So here we've got it taped off. I've got two passes of two inch green masking tape and then I'm putting on there the Stays Clear from Benjamin Moore, which is just a clear glaze. And what this will do, as you saw in my other video, this will seal up the edge of the tape so any bleeding that's done is done by the clear medium and so your lines are perfectly straight and perfectly sharp, which is very nice. All right, now I mixed up my tint or my toner with some tints and, and I made it fairly weak and you can see the ones on the left I've already done one pass and I decided it wasn't quite strong enough so I did a second pass. Now the nice thing about this is, if you go too strong, too fast, too quick, you're pooched, you're done. And by going lighter, you can creep up on the, uh, on the finish you're looking for. And it just gives you a little wiggle room. So you can go a little more, it's hard to go less, but you can always go a little more. Roll on this stuff, and I used again the uh, whiz roller to, um, to put that on. And, and in applying it with the whiz roller, you get a little more of that uh, mottled look, whereas if you had a big roller and a cutting brush, it wouldn't be quite as nice. Time to pull off the tape. Make sure you let everything dry completely. Uh, if, if it's not entirely dry, then when you go to pull the tape off, you might have some bridging between the paint and the tape, and it might end up pulling some of it off. So we'll take off the tape, and uh, that will reveal our nice little finish. And you can see how that yellow toner that I put on earlier helps marry the two of them together. This really changed the look of this room. The guy who owned this place, he just wanted something just to, just to spruce it up a little bit. And altogether, this took only, I would say, three hours start to finish. So don't be afraid to try any of these things. Um, we kept it all one sheen, but you can play with the sheen in there a little bit too. So come by our site, uh, creativepaintingtechniques.org. More stories and tips and techniques and tricks. We'll see you there.